Good morning, and welcome to First Baptist Blanchard. We are so glad that you are here to worship with us this morning. If you are our guest, we are especially glad that you are here. Would you please do us a favor? In the pew in front of you is this visitor's card. Would you please take it, fill it out, and that gives us a record of your visit and also gives us a way to pray for you. At the end of the service, would you take it to our welcome center and we have a gift we would love to give you. We know that God is going to do some amazing things this morning and we cannot wait to see what he does. So welcome to First Baptist Blanchard. Well, good morning, church. So good to see you. Let's stand together. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Oh, you know it. Let's sing it out. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? Oh, it was my tomb till I met you. And I was breathing but not alive. And all my failures I tried. To hide, it was my tears till I met you. Boy, you called my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness into your glorious day. That's you this morning, oh, and now your freedom is all that I know. Chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. He called your name, and you ran out of the grave. Amen. You good singing this morning. Let's keep singing. Let's sing this hymn, Revive Us Again. Well, let's sing. We praise Thee. We praise Thee, O God, for the Son.
Amen. Hey, sing that chorus. And hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Amen. Aren't you thankful amen. that he revives us? Amen. amen. Oh, let's sing this song. This is by far one of my favorites. When you've got nowhere else to run to, run to Jesus. Let's sing this together this morning. I speak Jesus. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there Start singing out. Cause your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is love. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like fire. I just want speak the name of Jesus, but oh, we're fear and all anxiety, to every soul affected by depression, I speak Jesus.
Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. And Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Oh, shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name Cause I know there is peace within your presence, I speak Jesus. Amen. Would you give the Lord a hand? Amen. 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 You can be seated. We uh, got a... a sp- couple things going on. First off, we're going to start our offering, so men, if you'll come, we're going to do our offering. Uh, And this is just a part of our worship, amen? This is not a a halt in the worship, this is a part of it. And uh, let me just say this, if if you think you don't have the money to give, trust God, believe on Him. And He said you are blessed with a blessing if you'll obey Him in your tithes and offerings. And so just trust the Lord this morning. So let's pray and our men will your offering. Father, we do thank you that we can speak your name in every darkness and every everything that looks terrible. Father, we can speak your name and you are there and you are light, you are hope in a dark world. So Father, thank you this morning. Father, I pray that you'll bless our offering and those that give and that you will just continue to move in this church and we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask our pastor to come up here. Uh, brother, come on. He doesn't know I'm doing this so he's scared. <laughs> Um, if you don't know, yeah, if you don't know, uh, Tuesday, he is getting old, and uh, he is turning 50 years old on Tuesday, and, uh, and so from the choir, music, media, ministry, we got you a card, and uh, uh, he's going to hate this. It's a $200 gift card to Bass Pro. So <laughs> I know he doesn't know, he's not going to know what to do with it. And uh, bless his heart. And Miss, Miss Christy, make him get you something nice. Okay. Yeah, you're in December. <laughs> but, brother, we love you. Thank you for all you do for us. And hope you have a good birthday. Make Miss Christy make you something nice and uh, all that. Kind of. Can you love on our pastor? Amen. Amen. Hey to you, happy birthday! Happy birthday to you. So, if you don't know, anytime we have a choir birthday, 
member, we have a birthday. We sing happy birthday in the most horrible way you possibly can. And that's what you just got, all right? That's our, that, that was our, that's our tradition. And uh, we have seen some of you, when we're starting practice in here, and we're singing happy birthday, we have seen some of you looking through the windows and the doors. <laughs> And be like, what are they doing in there? And uh, so that's what, every time we have a birthday, we sing it as horribly as we can, and that's our tradition. But, um, so we love you, Pastor. Hope you have a blessed birthday, and uh, thank you for all you do for us, and we love you. Um, we're, the choir's going to sing one more song, and then Pastor's going to come bring a word. And we taught you this song. We, we sang it for you last week, and we just want to teach it to you again. Uh, I, my prayer for this song is that this wouldn't just be words on a page that you that you read or another song to sing. May these words be a prayer of our heart that he would be the center of it all. There's a different kind of peace in the middle of the there's a different kind of strength when the weakness makes us strong. There's a different kind of healing that cures the longing in our soul. And it's a different kind of hope more than we see it's who we know we will praise you in the center praise you in the center of it all the center of it all every valley every victory you are with us in the center be weathered by our loss. There's a different kind of love where fear is shattered at the cross. We will praise you in the center, praise you in the center. different kind of battle 
when you know the war's already won. It's a different kind of power when by your death we overcome. We will praise you in the center. We will praise you in the center of it all. The center. Father, we thank you this morning. Father, let that be a prayer of our heart that you would be the center of it all. Father, if we do nothing else, Father, help us just to put you first and let you be the center of everything we do. Father, we don't need more programs. We don't need more events. Father, we need to be in love with you. And we'll let us put you in the middle, put you in the center. Father, would you stir our hearts? Would you preach through our preacher today? In Jesus' name, amen. So we will have some props this morning. Got to get them kind of out here and around. So I'll kind of tuck some of them. That's the deal with not having a big pulpit. You know, when you have a big pulpit, you can hide your illustrations behind it. You can put things here and there where you want it and that kind of stuff. But, oh, well, we'll get through it. <clears throat> so, yes, I was not feeling well last Sunday. Kind of glad I already had Brother Andrew ready because my voice was pretty much gone Sunday. Um, I did get to go to a friend of mine's church. Um, I have a camp in Winfield, and a guy that I used to usher with, we used to work the doors with. We would shake people's hands, give bulletins, and all that kind of stuff. His name is Blaine Ussery, and Blaine is a pastor now in Winfield. We both have surrendered to ministry as older guys and about the same time and all that, and, and so he's in Winfield, and and uh, I said, you know what, oh, oh uh, Blaine's over there, I'm going to go visit him this morning. So I went and, and, and was part of his church, and you know, he, <clears throat> at, the, at, at somewhere right before, he had to lead worship that day. His, his, okay, Brother Kirk, his worship leader wasn't there that day, so he had the dual role. He got to lead, praise the Lord, <laughs> that ain't happening here, I can't carry a tune in a bucket, and he couldn't either. And um, so, you know, he, he led it and everything and did all that, and and man, I could just see the hand of the Lord on him and everything. He said, hey, Brother Clay, you got a word for us this morning? I said, look, bro, you know I'm a preacher. I can pre I'll speak as long. My voice is a little gone. All I'll say is this. Man, it was so cool to watch me and you both, older in life, surrender into ministry and start preaching. Man, just speak the word today and let's see what happens. Lo and behold, somebody got saved after that service man it was awesome he told me he said hey man god's moving i don't know what's going on he can just use this old preacher boy like me and, and people get saved and he said we're baptizing eight this is in a church the size of about 30 people and he was baptizing eight that night man i was like man this is awesome this is good yeah god's good he's saving and so I got to spend some time with him and so just kind of wanted to let you know where I was at and everything hey you know what I did I even made sure I got a bulletin because I wanted y'all to know I was in church <laughs> our pastor always did that he ingrained it in us he said man if you're gonna miss and you're on vacation or you're gone somewhere well bring back a bulletin I want to know where you serve so I was at Corinth Baptist Church on Highway 472 in Winfield Louisiana and it was good 
Hey, so this morning, I want you to know that we're starting a new series. It's called I Will. Um, in the foyer, there's been some books there for a couple of weeks, five-buck donation, or just grab one. doesn't matter to us, just as long as you can have it, and you can start reading along and, and, and seeing, you know, what's happening. And so the title this morning, the, the kind of the thought, the theme that's going to kind of ripple through here is, Am I Inward or Outwardly Focused? Center of it all, Kirk, great job on that song. You know, that kind of brings us into it. Is he the center of it all? Is Christ like in the middle of everything? Is he in the middle of our worship? Is he in the middle of our daily lives? Is he in the middle of everything? He should be in the center. And then we are to be outwardly focused kind of like what we said uh, in prayer breakfast this week, ought to be like a show and tell. It ought to, ought to be showing and ought to be telling that Jesus lives in me. And so that's kind of where I want to go this morning, an inward and an outward focus. If you have your Bibles, turn to Philippians. We're going to be in a lot of Scripture today. Philippians 1, 1 through 26 is where I'll kind of start us out. But I want us to kind of understand this. This I will should lead us right into revival. Y'all know we're going to have revival in November. See, if you don't, now you do. Now you can go ahead and mark it on your calendar if it's not already there. November the 27th, Brother Jim will be here with us in the morning service. Go ahead and mark your calendar. Go ahead, your day planner, put it in your phone, whatever. Put it in your reminder because we will be having revival. And this series will lead us right up to it. We'll, we'll go six weeks into this and then uh, right into to the revival. And then there comes Christmas, right? Man, December, right around the corner, it's going to happen quicker than you think. November the 4th, I'll preach a message. November the 11th, we'll have our musical. You know what? Go ahead and start inviting your friends to that now, too. Now you know, December 11th, we're going to have the musical. Things going on. Then I'll do another message leading up to Christmas on the 18th, and then I'll do a Christmas message on the 25th. And then you know what's going to be awesome? 2023. We're going to experience God in a whole new way. 2023. You know, 30-some years ago, Henry Blackaby put out a book called what? Good job. I must be left-ear dominant because I didn't hear much over here. But he, 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 he wrote a book, and, and it's experiencing God. And, 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 and it was, it was life-changing for a lot of folks because you know what? They experienced God. And some, you know, would kind of grumble and go, man, it was like 12-week study. Man, the book was like that thick. And You know what? We got to spend time with God to experience God. It's not osmosis. It doesn't just leap in and, and jump into your mind. You have to spend time with God, whether it be in this book, and, and it, primarily it needs to be here, but a Christian book, something like this to, to engage you and to equip you and to get you to understand we are to experience God, and then we're to give that experience to other people. That's called your testimony. We're to share Jesus with others. So 2023, so leading up right now, I will, this whole book, this whole study, this whole year is getting us ready to experience God. And at the end of this in November, we're going to say, I what? Will. It's not maybe so, it's not if so, I will. We're going to make a commitment I believe I'm going to write a covenant and I'm going to put it out on the table that you can come by and sign it and you say, look, I'm willing to put not only my chatter as what we've been listening to and looking at Jonah, but I'm willing to put my name to it. I'm ready to sign a blank page and say, I will. Whatever God's asking me to do, I don't question it. I just say, I will. That's where we're leading up to, and that's where we'll be going over the next few, few months. And then, if you remember, I preached a message a while back, and we used Sammy Tippett, where he came in and did a 13-day prayer challenge. Did anybody? Yeah, I don't even want you to raise your hand, because I don't want to embarrass anybody. But if you took that and you went through it, you saw the power that was on this man's life. And for how many years? I think 30, 40, some 50 years, Sammy Tippett has been preaching the gospel all around the world. He was in Romania and saw God do some great things and in different areas saw God move. And so Sammy Tippett will be here with us, uh, I think uh, January the 8th, if I'm not mistaken. I'll have to go back and look at my calendar, but I think that's it. Yes, because the first is the first Sunday, and he'll be here on the next one. So he'll be with us. He's going to encourage us and get us stirred up and ready to experience God. 
So that's kind of where we're going. That, that, that's what we're looking at. But today, you know what? I want you to ask yourself, am I God? Is God in who I am? Am I inwardly focused? And see, you can only ask you and God, because see, I can't get out there. I don't have x-ray vision, praise the Lord, because some of y'all would scare me to death, but I don't have it. But the deal is, you and God know. And you know what God tells us? Who can know the heart? It's deceitfully wicked, but God, he knows the heart. And so this morning, there's no raising hands, there's none of this. It's between you and God. And you need to ask yourself, Am I inwardly focused or am I outwardly focused? Because that's going to be the charge all through this. This is, this is what we're going to be looking at. Two traits to examine our lives as a church member. member inward and outwardly focused members or church members, however you want to look at it. Focusing on ourself. You know what that is? Somebody? Somebody nailed it over here. They said selfish. Good job, whoever said it. You nailed it. Focusing, and Craig, you got it too. Focusing on ourselves is self-centered while focusing on others is just the opposite. It's selfless. It's thinking of ourselves less. Inward groups of churches, these inwardly focused groups, they experience atrophy after a while. They, over time, they slowly fade away through atrophy. They, they, they just slowly self-center, self-look, and they, they do this. That's one reason you see so many churches dying off today. You see them closing. You, you see it at a rapid rate. You can call our association right now, and they'll tell you about seven churches now that the association owns because this, uh, this, this sense of decay, this sense of just falling apart, they became inwardly focused. They lost sight of what the command says. You know what the command with Christ is? Go, love, and serve. That's commands that he gives us through his words. But you know what? When we see this inwardly focused, we, we want to be some words that he, he wrote in the book or this. We can, what, what can you do for me in my comfort? When we start being inwardly focused, we start saying, what can you do for me? How can you make me comfortable? How can you make me feel good? All about me, me-ism. What can you do to make me feel good? See, when uh, atrophy appears, they kick into survival mode. Y'all ever been in a, a dying and decaying church? I've been in a couple of them. Man, it starts getting self-centered. Hey, we got to cut the lights back. Hey, we got to cut the air back. We got we to get so inwardly focused. Hey, it's going to close if we don't watch. And you know what? It will. We don't need to be self-centered. We need to be outwardly centered, outwardly showing the Lord. Outward churches, see, because you got to give good news, you got to give bad news. Outward churches seek to benefit their community with what? Love. Outward community. Outward. We want to love on other folks. They want to tell others about Jesus, yet they realize the one most effective, the one that they, it's through service, the one avenue that they can do this, that they can show Christ. We said it a minute ago, show and tell. We can show Jesus, then we can tell others about Jesus. How can we serve our neighbors? See, that's outwardly focus. We're, we're trying to serve those folks out there. How can we do it? How can we make our community a better place? That's an outwardly focused church. A church member should always be growing. Amen? They're going to give us a growth chart here in just a second. There ought to be something that's happening inside of us. If not, that's where that word um, atrophy comes from. And it'll come. See, this is where we are. How'd you start out? Did you start out a baby or did you start out full grown? Amen. Yeah, we start out little. And then we grow and then we grow. I told Brother Kirk this week, I said, man, I wish I could go to my old home uh, that, that my mom and dad that I, I grew up in and I could take that door off the hinges and bring it up here. It, it's got my growth chart from when I was a kid. Man, grew, and then I finally hit 6'2". Man, I thought, all right, man, I'm a tall dude. I'm tall as my daddy now. This is awesome. And then you know what? Then I had kids, Troy. And then we, we growth charted them. And, you know, Jordan started out. Now, I think he's full grown now. My goodness. I was with him this week. That boy's two. Ooh, nope. Got to throw another couple hundred on him. He's about 400 now. Man, boy's getting big. 
And, and he started out here and here and here and here. And now he's 6'3". He's outgrown me. But you know, that should be our life as a Christian. Amen or oh me. The Bible says we start out as a babe in Christ. And then there's a new life, right? We're a new creature, a new creation, a new person has, has come in. And so we're baby. We start out immature. We start out a, a, little, a little whiny, a little wah wah. And got to, somebody's got to change me. Somebody's got to feed me. Got to be inwardly focused. And then I start growing. And then I should hit maturity in some point of a, an adult in here. So that's what we should be looking like. That's what we should be striving for. That's how we should be growing on our, our, our growth chart, chart. Maturity, growing stronger, growing taller. We don't stay the same as humans, and we shouldn't stay the same as Christians. Amen? Shouldn't stay babes. We need to grow. That's why I like this book. Tom Rainer. Uh, you'll get some quotes. I, I'll give some quotes. Most of the stuff's mine. I, I, didn't, I didn't plagiarize and take a lot of his stuff. I hope you've read the book. If you read the book, you'll go, yeah, he's right. I didn't. But Tom Rader wrote this book, I will. And inside are nine traits of an outwardly focused Christian. Now, I did get some of the nine traits from there, the nine traits, because that's what we're doing. We're following along with the book. That's why I've encouraged you to, to get it, pick it up, and we go through it. Here's the good and the bad. There's nine traits, right? I'm preaching how many messages? Six. This is church, but we can talk in church. There are nine. <laughs> Blanchard and Effie math here. There's nine, but I'm only going to preach six, so you need to get the book and you need to read the other three because you need to know what's going on. All right, so today we're going to focus on one trait, moving from self-centered um, to Christ-centered. So I'm going to read some scripture for you right here. This is Philippians 1. See, it's the church. Paul's talking. He's writing, Paul and Timothy, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, to all the saints. So he's saying, those inside the church, those members inside the church of Christ Jesus who are at Philippi. See, this is who he's wrote it to. He's wrote it to the church at Philippi with the bishops or the leaders and the deacons or the servants, however you want to take those two terms, Grace to you and peace from our God, Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, uh, making requests for you all with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Christ. Father, God, I thank you for your word. Lord, illuminate it today. Let it be a lamp into our feet, a light into our path. Lord, let it show us exactly what you want us to do. And then, God, give us the ability, give us the feet and the legs and the hands and, and the mouthpiece and all that to be obedient to live it out. God, again, open our ears, open our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. So, moving from an I am church member to an I will church member. That's where we're going. You know, if you have kids and, you know, and you're asking them to do something, oh, I will, yeah, I, I, I am. I'm going to get around to that. I, I'll get there. That used to drive me crazy with my kids. You know, if I said, hey, go cut the grass, I meant, like, get up, go get on the mower and cut the grass. Yeah, I, I'll get around to that. You know, this is kind of where we're, we're moving from. We're getting around from, yeah, I know I need to share the gospel. Yeah, I know I need to be an active church member. Yeah, I know I need to kind of go benefit others and this kind of stuff. I'm going to get to that one day. How about today? Let it be today. Let it start in us fresh and anew. So let us uh, ask ourselves, how do I do? How do I do? That's, that's action. How do I do? How are we going to, to do something? Well, here's called a rubric. This, this is what we're going to go by. This whole message, as I'm talking, I, I want you to say, sense this. I told Mackenzie this week, I, I, she, she made this for me. She put it together. I said, man, I wish we had a camera where it could be up here and it could be bigger where y'all can see it. But she, she made it pretty good. I, I, I'll kind of scan the room, let y'all see a little bit. Benefit others. That's what we want to talk about today. Inwardly or outwardly focused. If I'm outwardly focused, I want to benefit others. Amen? Tell others about Jesus. If I'm outwardly focused, I need to be or want to desire to tell others about Jesus. And then our last component, I'll pick it up in case you can't see it, 
is what? Okay. So that's our rubric. That's what we're going to go off of. That's our measuring stick. That's our, can y'all see it? I know it's going to be hard for, but we'll move it around. I'm going to pick it up a few times. It's an evaluation tool or a set of guidelines. That's what a rubric is. It's just a guideline. You know, you have it in your job, you have it in your marriage, you have it in a lot of things, but it's just some guidelines. Benefit others, tell others about Jesus, and to serve. First point, you're taking notes, is this. I must look at my attitude about the church. That's the first one. Turn over one page to Philippians chapter 2, okay? I'm going to drink a little bit today because my throat is still a little not good. We'll get through it. Here's what it says. Therefore, or so, if there is any consolation or encouragement, you know we're to be encouraging believers? As the church, we are to be encouraging one another. Encouraging. So here we go again. So therefore, if it's any encouragement in Christ, if any comfort of love, If any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affliction or affection and mercy, fulfill my joy. Oh, we're going to dig into that. By being like-minded, having the same love, being of the one accord, one mind, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of us look not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. My goodness, that doesn't sound like American Christianity today, does it? It's, now it's all me, 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 I, give me mine, and all this kind of stuff. So I want us to go, again, with this rubric and, and with this thought. Does my attention or my attitude, so think about it. Again, I, I can't get inside your mind. I don't know your attitude, but he tells us this. Does my attitude benefit others? So I want that to sink in just a second. You have an attitude. Whether you want to admit it or not, from this side of the house to this side, those watching online, those that aren't here, we have an attitude. We can mask it pretty good sometimes. We can put on a fake mask sometimes when somebody makes us mad or something like that. We, we can hide it in a, in a lot of different ways. But you know what? When you're squeezed, what comes out? Should be Jesus. So does my attitude benefit others? Does my attitude tell others about Jesus? Kind of ring that around too, show and tell, as we're going through this. And how is my attitude about service in the church? See, Paul's talking to the church at Philippi. And in, 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 in there, this is their, this is what he's doing. Inside there, is there encouragement? Does my attitude bring encouragement to the church? Comfort and love, fellowship with others. That's what he's telling us all throughout here. You you know, he he says this, you want to make me happy. That's what he said in verse 2. He said it. Verse 2, fulfill my joy, that my in there. I want to bring that word out just a little bit. Because see, a lot. Paul, do you know this? A lot of these churches, he birthed them. Right? Remember, he went into these towns and these cities. He, he began to meet in the synagogues and different places and start these churches. So he, he birthed most of these churches. He birthed this one at Philippi, and he's saying, hey, you know what would make me happy? Think of others more than yourself. Encourage one another. But I want us to look at the word, though. He says this in, in the NLT. I'm, I'm telling y'all, man, the more I read the NLT, the more I like it. It's the New Living Translation. He says this, saying, agreeing wholeheartedly with each other. He's saying, agree wholeheartedly with each other. Let me ask you, have you done that before? Agreed wholeheartedly? He, he uses the word my. I've been waiting to get to this word. It's a primary pronoun for the first person, only expressed with in, in an emphatic way. So he's saying, hey, I birthed you, you're mine, my church, my, my folks, my, my people. He, he wants them to hear me. And, and, and the way he says it is it's Greek. 
you know, most of the, the, old, the New Testament is written in Greek, right? So the word here in the Greek, I know this is just going to really do something for y'all. It's the word ego. E-G-O. Ego. Translated into Latin, because a lot of times the Greek, and it was translated into Latin and into the, to, to the Catholic Church. You know, even up to just a few years ago, the Mass was done in Latin, if you didn't know that. And, and so a lot of words translate in, in, into different things. In Latin, the word is ego. Y'all ever heard that word before? We might have an ego. Okay. We get our English translation for the word through ego is I, self. So let's kind of do a, a, a self-evaluation in here. Can we do it? Thank you. Do I tell others about Jesus? See, that's self-evaluation. You have to evaluate. Have I been telling others about Jesus? Do I love others? Because see, the deal is, when you love other people, you're going to tell other people about what you love. I guarantee you, half of y'all, Brother Don, Brother Tom, what are two things I like to do? Or who do I like? Deer hunting and LSU. Good job. <laughs> deer hunting and LSU. I'm going to tell you what, you get around me very long, you're going to hear something about LSU and you're going to hear something about deer hunting. It's things I like. Occasionally I'll talk about, no, I'm just playing. I was going to say my wife. <laughs> I'm playing. But you're going to hear about my wife a lot. You'll hear about my daughter. You'll hear about different things in my life because those are things that we care about. We talk about those things that we care about. If you love them, you talk about them. If you love Jesus, you know what? You're going to talk about Jesus. And others are going to be known that you love him. And here's one that with this thought, with this ego, ego, with, with th th this word, I, me, my, do I work together with others? And you see, the whole thing is, what we're talking about, where we want to go, Miss Terry, is I will. I will. I will. I will. Everything we're hearing about today, it, it, it's getting off self-centered. It's getting off others. It's getting on, I will. I will have the right attitude. I must look at my attitude about the church. I must. And there's the rubric that Paul gives us. He gives us an inward focus list. You read it and look at it inside there. If you have mascara, lipstick, highlight or something, there's words that we need to highlight in our Bible. We need to know them and understand them. Don't be selfish. That's what he tells. Don't be self-centered. Don't be selfish. Don't impress others. If we want to have an attitude that's outwardly focused or inwardly focused, don't look out for your own interest. But then he gives us outward. That was inward. Here's outward. Be humble. Man, I don't know if we use that one hardly at all these days. You pull up. Uh, Randall was telling us a story. He... He was driving on the road this week, and some guy, you know, he, he might have got a little bit ahead of him, whatever, got all upset, screaming and hollering, rolled down his window, wanted to get, get confrontational. Christy had it this week, too. Jeff told us a story about his life. He said, man, I love being over in that left lane on a four-lane road. Man, I can be over there. And I, can, I can drive as fast as I want to drive. And, you know, but then you get those morons that get in the left lane, and they clog up the thing, and, it's, you know, they just tit for tat and everything. I, I want to just kill them. I want to just push them out of the road and everything. You know what that's called? Self-centered. Meism. Me, 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 me. I have somewhere to go. I'm in a hurry. Get out of my way. Y'all laughing because that's half of y'all. I know, Craig, me too. But, but to be our, we're to be humble. Thinking of others better than yourself. Let me ask you something. Please don't raise your hand. Please don't say anything. When's the last time you thought of somebody else other than yourself? How about this one? When's the last time you took interest in somebody else? You know what that's called or could be called? Starts with a D, ends with ship. Discipleship. Who are you discipling? Because Matthew 28, 19 gives us a great command, not a great suggestion, but a great command. Go ye therefore and make what? Disciple. Hey, bro, I think that's the first time I've ever heard you talk. Good job. Randy? Disciples. 
We're to make disciples. So that just tells us that I'm not inwardly focused anymore. I'm willing to spend my time telling somebody else about Jesus, watching them mature and grow in their faith. See, that's what we're supposed to do when we're what? Outwardly focused. We're thinking of others better than ourselves. Here's some quotes from the book. Wrong attitude. He gives us this. If we do without the right attitude, we submit to legalistic guidelines. See, when you do it in the wrong way, it, com- it becomes legalistic. And then you know what happens when it's legalistic? You become frustrated. You, you start thinking, oh, I, it ought to do it this way because it ought to be that way. And, and then you know what else happens? You start burning out when you do it in the, in the wrong motive, in the wrong attitude of the do's. Do it the wrong way, but the right attitude. Don't you like the right attitude? The right attitude. Doing becomes natural. When, when you're doing for others, it just becomes natural. It becomes joyous. You, you remember, you, you've heard this saying at Christmas, it's better to what? Good job, Randy. You on fire today. I saw you in a tie this uh, uh, Friday night. You look darn good. You look good. That's what we need to be doing. We need to be thinking of others, and it becomes joyous when you give to other people. Hey, let me tell you something. Try it. Try it. It feels good. You'll be a joyous church member. That's what he tells us. All. When we do out of an overflow of gratitude or what God has done for us through his son, when we're doing it because it's about Jesus who lives within us, you know what? We just give it away. Aren't you glad that Jesus gave you grace? Aren't you glad that Jesus gave you mercy? Aren't you glad that he instilled faith inside you to trust in those things? Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. And, and, and by grace through faith, you can have salvation. Those are two great things I love to talk about, but i got to move quicker. I am a unifying church member is the next one, if you're taking notes. I'm a unifying church member. Ephesians 4, 1 through 3 says this, Therefore I, this is Paul, he, again, writing to another church, writing another letter, and this time, Miss Penny, you know where he's at? Starts with a P, prison. Paul's in prison when he's penning this letter, when he's writing it. Therefore, I, a prisoner for, uh, for serving the Lord. So he's a prisoner from serving God. From serving the Lord, he's been imprisoned. And he's penning a letter to Ephesians, begging you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with others. Making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit binding yourselves together with peace Whew. well that's good put the good of the group before anything else putting the group before your own is unifying you ever done that one put the good of the group like if you ever coached a baseball team or an athletic team or you ever did, did anything like that, you put the greater good of the team ahead of yourself. That's humble. He tells us. He gives us another list. You have to be humble, gentle, patience with other people. You want to be a unifying church member? You want to be outwardly focused? Humble, gentle, patient with others. Make allowance for faults because you love Man, when's the last time you made an allowance for somebody else's faults? You know what we want to do? Unbuckle that shirt. We're going to take them to Fifth City. I'm going to show you something. Yeah. We're going to get it on right here. No. Make an allowance for folks' faults. I'm, can I be honest with you, Kyle? I stink at that. Can I be honest with the rest of y'all? I stink at that. If you don't believe me, you can ask her. Because that's the worst one I'm to. Make an allowance for faults. United in spirit. How about be at peace with other people? And then ask yourself. See, th- th- this is the whole deal about coming to church. You know what? It ought to be a self-evaluation. It shouldn't be coming in here and, boy, man, when I leave out of here, boy, don't I just feel so good. 
There ought to be some, some, some meaning here in, in, in this see it. So again, the rubric, does my attitude benefit others? Ask yourself, am I bringing unity? Does my attitude tell others about Jesus? Yeah, when you leave out of here today, this rubric, I hope, is burned into your mind because I'm going to read it over and over. Does my attitude, how is my attitude about serving the church? You know what I, I thought about in all this? When, when I read these scriptures, he said, Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God always to be humble, gentle, be patient with others, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, binding yourself together with peace. You know what I never saw? I never saw a but. But, but they wronged me but they don't do it the way I want to do it. There's no but in any of this when we want to be a unifying church member. Amen? There's, there's no but in it. So stop putting a but where God puts a period. Stop doing it. Bible mandates us to have an attitude of unity in the church, so I must have a unity. And then next, am I sacrificial? Am I a sacrificial church member? Let's look a little bit more in Philippians 2, verses 5 and 8. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, making the form of a bondservant or a slave, and becoming in the likeness of man, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled. Man, the word humble just keeps coming over and over. If we want to be a unifying, if we want to be a, an, an outwardly uh, a church person, a, 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 a follower of Christ, be humble. Humble yourself and become obedient. There's two words that you as a church member need to highlight in your life humble be humble and be obedient to the point of death you know what that means troy that means i have to crucify my flesh every morning i have to before my feet hit the floor if i don't want to walk in the flesh i have to crucify my flesh i have to die to self every day lord i die to clay today to follow you to be a unifying to be a follower of christ don't, Randy, we don't see that much either. We don't live that out a whole lot either. Die to self? Man, I want to pad my pocket. I want to build my kingdom. I want to just have it all. So contrary to everything that the Word of God tells us if we don't watch. Put others ahead. Sacrifice. Jesus emptied himself of all glory. He veiled his deity so that he could walk with man. That's what he's talking about when he humbled himself to the point of being him. He, he, he veiled his glory. You know why? Because nobody can look at God and live. And he veiled the glory of who he was so he could walk among men, so he could take away the sins of the earth, so he could go to the cross, the old rugged cross, to take away your sin and my sin. He could take on all the guilt, all the shame. He took on everything. He left all of... Can you imagine this? That you're like the king? Like the king? Like I am is who God said he is? He said I am who I am? He is the king supreme of everything? And he leaves heaven where all the angels and everything that's there is just glorifying him, bowing down, worshiping him, just saying you're the king of kings, the Lord of lords, you're the great I am. They're, they're, they're shouting and praising him. And you know what? He stepped out of that and he veiled it to come in humanity to look and talk and breathe to give you and to give me an example how to live. And he exchanged his, his life, his, his life of glory, his life of splendor to your sorry life of a sinner. He exchanged your sin debt and he pardoned you. He looks at you now by the blood shed at Calvary and he says, not guilty, not guilty, not guilty, not guilty. It's called a pardon. I'm pardoned from everything I've done wrong because I've trusted through faith Jesus. What a great God we serve. He emptied himself of all glory. He veiled his deity so he could walk with man and we wouldn't die. Here's some homework. You like homework? Go read Matthew 17. 
that's where he was veiled and he unveiled to Moses and all that that's your homework Jesus became a servant a slave in the likeness of man you know why to serve others and if we could imitate Christ that's what to serve others this self-centered lifestyle that we leave we need to junk it we need to live and to understand that Jesus was the greatest servant he served we need to be servants he humbled himself common theme of this rubric he was obedient he died to self so again here's the three I'm going to keep reading them to you does my attitude benefit others does my attitude tell others about Jesus how is my attitude about service in the church when we sacrifice you know what we're most acting like Christ when we sacrifice we're learning that the, the greatest joy comes when we put others before ourselves. These are things we're learning here. One of the most powerful do's, and we rarely do it, is the next one. One of the most powerful do's that we don't do is the next one. Can you put it up? Here it is. Y'all awake? <laughs> I'm giving them a hard time. Prayer. You know what? We, we say it all the time. Man, prayer has the power to change everything. Prayer does this. Prayer does that. And you know what we do most of the time? It's the last thing we do. If you've been reading in Jonah, if you come to the Wednesday night Bible study, anything like this, the la Jonah is in the belly of a fish. Three days, three days, and in, in our knowledge of, of, of that would be this. Three days he is without water. You know what happens after three days without water? It tells us it will die. He is to the point of dying before he finally prays and asks God to do something in his life. You know what? Before you wag your head and go, oh, Jonah, it's you too. You just don't want to admit it. That's okay. Because you know what? God knows your heart. Nanny, nanny, boo, boo. He knows your heart. He knows everything about you. He knows what's going on. Am I a prayerful church member? Ask yourself that. Am I praying for my church daily? Am I praying for my pastor, our staff? Am I praying for folks? This is what he says and as he writes to the church at Colossae. He says this, So we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. Man, Paul birthed this church, and he, he said, I haven't stopped praying for you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of His will and to give you a, a spiritual wisdom and understanding. Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord, and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while, you, you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. Again, Colossae, who he's writing to, another church. He tells us, Paul's telling us, you know the power of prayer. He wanted to be the example. Remember in other places, he said, follow me, imitate me, be an imitator. And he's saying, pray, pray for the church. I pray for you, pray for me. He's given us this example. You know what he was? Paul was a leader. He led by example. He cast the vision. He, 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 he's saying, hey, look, I see your attitude. Hey, this is what, follow me. Pray, pray, pray. I am a prayerful church member. I've not stopped praying for you. And then he says this, God will give or fill you with the knowledge of his will when we pray. When we seek his face, when we, when we get in there. Spiritual wisdom and understanding, that's all from praying. Again, go back to it. My attitude towards prayer, does it benefit others? How about this? Have you, you just praying for me, 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 me? Are you praying for others? Your attitude of prayer, does it go towards others? Does it benefit others? And does my attitude tell others about Jesus? And how is my attitude about serving the church? This is what he says in verse 10 when we, when we bring that back out. Then, the way you live will always honor and please the Lord, and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while, you will grow as you learn to know God better. You know what that brings me back to? The growth chart. The growth chart. Am I growing? 
in a prayerful manner? Am I seeking God's will? Am I trusting Him? Am I growing and moving? Then, you're going to hear some more then statements in some more of these. Here we go, number five. I am a joyful church member. Am I? Are you? Are you a joyful church member? Turn to Philippians 4, 4 through 7. Always, always be full of joy in the Lord. This is Paul saying it again at Philippi. I say it again, rejoice. Hey, moron, if you didn't get it the first time, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all that you do. Remember the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all that He has done. Then you will be, or you will experience God's peace will exceed anything that you can understand. His peace will guard you. He'll guard your heart. He'll guard your mind as you live in Christ Jesus. Paul gives us another command. Rejoice in the Lord. And if you didn't get it the first time, he said, again, I say, rejoice. You know, we should be some of the most joyous people on the face of the earth. This is yes, an amen or something. We are to be joyous people. Then why do we have the longest face of anybody? Oh my goodness, pastor, it's 1140. I'm so ready to go home. I can't wait till y'all get to heaven. It's considerate and gracious brings joy. Being considerate and gracious brings joy. It brings joy. You want joy? Remember the Lord is coming soon. Amen? He's coming. Thank God this is not all there is, right? I'm glad this ain't all there is. It's good, but it ain't that good. It's been good, but it ain't been great. One day, you know what? It'll be exactly how God intended it to be great you, you kind of look through here um, he, he's been given this then statements verse 7 says is then you experience God's peace which ex, uh, exceeds anything that you can understand his peace will guard your heart and your mind as you live in Christ Jesus here's the book if y'all read the book you, 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 I don't know about y'all but I love this part of the book because sometimes I, I, I know some of these people that he writes about and, and he says this in an acronym. He says, Joy Robbers, Joy Robbing Church Members are a GCM. So apparently not many of y'all are reading the book right now because y'all would just be hollering out. That's a grumpy church member. GCM, grumpy church members. Man, I know a ton of them. And they ain't just all here. I know them in a lot of churches. They complain at business meetings. Oh, by the way, this is a quote from Rainer. This, this, this isn't me saying these. This is his quote, so I'm going to have this in quotes. They complain at business meetings. They're a persistently critic. They're a persistent critic. They're the members who view the church as an organization where they pay their dues to get the perks and the privileges. And they're grumpy and divisive when they don't. Unquote. Okay, so a JCM is this one. Apparently, y'all didn't get this one either. This is a joyous church member. They count their blessings. Joyous church members. Man, I love hearing like people that are just joyous in the Lord, and I get to pray with them. Man, they're thanking God for everything. Thanking God for the stars, the moon, the, the lights. They're thanking God for all this kind of different stuff. And he's just saying that they're, they're joyous. They count their blessings, grateful for the freedom to worship with other church members. You know, that's a freedom that we get to worship together consistent source of encouragement is a uh, joyous church member joyous church members always are looking for ways to encourage and to give encouragement I love you brother Ronnie that's you bro it all goes back to attitude all year I've been preaching this and talking about it it's a heart condition it all if we boil all this stuff down and me talking forever it, it, it just boils down to the heart What's in the heart comes out the mouth. If it's in the heart for prayer, it'll come out the mouth. If there's a heart of joy, it comes out the mouth. 
If there's a heart of unity, you know what? It comes out the mouth. What's in the heart will come out the mouth. It's, a, it's just that attitude. Does my attitude benefit others? Does my attitude tell others about Jesus? And how is my attitude about serving the church? The growth chart, again, it, it talks about our heart. And, you know, as a child, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, I'm going to read it. I, I talked about it earlier is this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature or, or a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. All right, y'all ready to wake up for a few minutes? I'm going to give you a visual aid, something that will wake you up, and you can see, and you can maybe take this one away and, and talk through it. So if we're born again, we're a new creature, right? We're a new creation. So that can either be a round peg, square peg, round this, whatever. We can look at it either way, okay? If we're new, we'll just say, this is you, all right? This means yes. This is you. All right. So if we're new and the Holy Spirit of God lives inside of you, you know what? You choose to go back to the old you. So this is the new. Oh, man, this is cool. This is white. Not even playing. So this is white, this is the new you, this is the Holy Spirit of God now dwells in you, and this is, this is the old you. Does it fit? I'm going to tell you what, I look forever, because I am a, I'm, I'm on like a love, uh, uh, like demolishing stuff. I was looking for a hammer and a peg and a round thing, and I wanted to get up on stage, and I wanted to pound it in there and pound it in there and, and force it in there. You know, that's funny, but that's what we do as Christians. We pound it and pound it until we go back to that old person who we were. We force it. We, man, we, uh, this doesn't fit. This doesn't really fit. You know what? I, I, I don't need to go back to the club anymore. I don't need to be going back to pornography anymore. I don't need to be going back to drugs and alcohol and all those kinds of stuff. But you know what? You're saved from it, right? You're saved by grace through faith. It's not of yourself. It's a gift of God. So it's not works or anything like that. But here's the deal. When you're trying to go back to those things, you're forcing it, right? Please wake up. <laughs> so if I took this sponge and I shoved it in here, it now fits, doesn't it? Is that intended to be how it's supposed to be? Thank y'all. But you know what? God, through who he is, he's sovereign. He'll let you go back to those old things. If you cram it and force it and bang it and shove it long enough, you keep going back to it, you keep going. See, it's not natural, is it? It's not natural. Two different pieces. It's not natural. But you know what? If you keep shoving, you keep prodding, you keep pushing, God will allow you to go back to the pig pen. He'll let you go back. And, and, and this is what the illustration here is this. We, we shouldn't look the same. The, the, the things that we used to like and touch and all that. And how about this? Prayer life stuck? Getting in the Word of God stuck? Spending time with God stuck? Going to church stuck? You know why? Because a lot of times you forced places that you shouldn't go into a place where God shouldn't have been, and now you're stuck. You know, in this the best? This is the best part about Christianity. You want to hear it? You want the good news? It's called repentance. It's called confession. I'm telling you right now, you get on your knees before a holy God with, with, with a pure heart, pure motives, and say, Lord, deliver me from pornography. God, deliver me from drugs. Deliver me from alcohol. Deliver me from anger. Deliver me from whatever. And you know what? As far as the east is from the west... God will forgive you of your sin. If you humbly get before the Lord and you ask Him, and you know what will happen? Wow. You're unstuck. You're unstuck. We need to spend time with God. Get out of the places that we don't need to be in. Get out of the areas that you don't need to be in. Get before a holy God. Repent, confess, and turn to Him, and you'll get unstuck you'll get unstuck here's the deal last point this is it 
am I willing to respond? That just means I will. Am I willing to ex- Am I willing to respond to the message? Am I willing to respond to the Holy Spirit of God where he's talking about confession, where he's talking about quit going in the places that you need to go? If, if we really get honest and we, we examine and, and do this self-examination about our, our attitude about the church, am I unifying in my church? Am I sacrificial to my church and with my church? Am I praying? Am I a prayerful church member? Am I a joyful church member? See, if all that's true, then you know what we're going to do? If all that is true, if my attitude is right towards the church, and if I'm unifying to the church and sacrificial, prayerful, and joyful, you know what you'll do? You'll attend it, extend it, and defend it. The book states this. Y'all remember? It almost feels like an eternity ago. We'd go to church on what? Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesdays, three times a week. That's what we used to call an active, vibrant church member. Somebody was coming three times a week. You know what the book, and this was written, I think in 2015, this book was written. It says if a person comes three times in a month, they're an active active church member. I got worse news than that. There's something called a pandemic that happened in, what, 2019? Y'all remember that? And if y'all came up in here and say, yes, I remember that. That was a crazy time. Here's here's the bad news. Here's the bad news. 36% fewer Americans attend church today. 30, this is Barner. If you want to go back and do some Barner research, they they produce their stuff online. You can go look at it. 36% fewer Americans attend church weekly in 2020 than they did in 1993. In 2021, there was a, 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 a less than a 10% point of difference between church attendance. See, we like to get on the millennials and the uh, Gen and uh, Gen X and, and, and the different ones, but, oh, it's going to get good for you boomers. It says this. There, there was a 10% together. That, that's 23 to 75, and I know my 75ers over that are going to go, yeah, that doesn't fit me. Although millennials and the emerging behind them, G, uh, Gen Z, are known for declining in religi- re- religiosity. Data shows that since 2019, the percentage of millennials reporting weekly church attendance has increased. That's good news, right? From 21% to 39%. Praise God. We got some good news. These young people coming back to church. Praise God. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Among Gen X attendance, has it increased 8 percent points? From 24 to 32, so the younger folks coming back to church. Here's the bad news, boomers, if you fit in this one. While boomers show, uh, an, in- While boomers show an increase in their attendance during the pandemic in 2020 to 31% weekly, recent numbers shows a decrease in attendance to 25% in 2022. Our most committed church members, the boomers, have dropped to 25% attendance. But praise God, millennials, they, they, they've turned it to almost 40%. So let me ask you a question that's in this book. How about this? How about all of a sudden we looked at our spouse or the one that we claim that we love the most and we give them 75% less of us? I'm going to tell you, when that happens, you see this, probably this right eye, because I think she's right-hand dominant. It'd be like something black right up under here because she would punch me in my face if I gave her 75% less of what I've already don't give her now. 75% less. So let that sit in for a minute. 75% less. I don't know. But this is how we're treating the bride of Christ. We claim this is the bride of Christ. And we come less and less. How about this today? How about we do this? You want some good news? How about we commit to change? I've preached this for one year now. Change what? Change me. One year, been leading up to this book. I wish I was that good that I knew that this is where I was going to go. But here's the deal. 
Ronnie, I can't change you. And I can't, the only person I can change is me. I can influence Christy a little bit. I can influence Annalise because she's still relatively young and she, she lives in my house and I can take her iPhone or I can take different gadgets or something like that. I can manipulate her in anything. But you know what? The only thing that can change a heart is God. He's the only one that's going to change us. How about this, church? How about we say, we're going to change. How about we're going to say, I'm going to quit being so, I'm going to quit being so outwardly focused. I'm going to quit being, I want to be inwardly focused. I want to focus on my relationship with Christ. I want to humble myself. I want to, I want to get along with Him. And I want, to, I want to finish this race that God's put before me, it says in Hebrews. How about we do this? I gave you the date, right? November 27th when Brother Jim's here. How about this? This is, this is man, this is going to be life-changing. How about right now you go to your boss if, you, if you're a working person? If you're retired, you don't have a boss, so you can come and you don't have to make any excuses. But if you go to work and you, you have a, a job and everything, how about you go in right now in the morning and you say, hey, boss man, hey, look, on, on, on November 27th, you know, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I need to take off. I need to use my vacation time because I want to get closer to the Lord. I want to experience God so much. I want a revival. I want a refreshing in my spirit. I want God to stir afresh and anew. How about that? I'm going to tell you right now. This would trip your boss out if you went and did that. Because you're going to benefit others. You're going to tell others about Jesus. And you're going to be evident that you're a servant of God. You're going to say, look, I'm, I'm, I'm committed to that revival because I need to be changed. I need to be under the Word of God. I need these messages. You know what? It starts today. I can commit to it. I know it's coming. All right, let's bow our heads. We're going to close our eyes. We're going to have a time of invitation. Hey, you know what? If we did that, if we started committing to the Lord now, we started praying, seeking His face, we started getting just before the Lord, getting in our, our prayer closet and spending time with God, you know what? We would be ready in 2023. We'd be ready to experience God. See, many of you, you're going to be on the tail end of it. We're going to be ready in January to experience God, and you're going to be some January, February into 2024 and going, man, what happened to them people? How, how, why are they so on fire with God? Why, why are they now inviting people? Why are they just so in love with Jesus? Because you're getting ready now. It goes back to our rubric. Does my attitude benefit others? Does my attitude tell others about Jesus? And how is my attitude about serving the church? How about this one? Let's stand. We'll be able to move around. How about this one? With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, think about this. How about we come to the altar and commit our life to the Lord afresh and anew today? How about we make a commitment to Him and say, hey, my attitude stinks. But man, I want to give it over to the Lord. I want to confess it to God. Hey, I've been robbed of my joy lately. I want my joy back. Have you laid your attitude on the altar lately? You can today. How about an attitude of service? We have the greatest outreach event tool that we're going to do in just a few weeks called Trunk or Treat. Have you committed to a trunk? Have you committed to serve anywhere part of it? See, it's going to take all, it's the body of Christ. It's going to take the full body to reach this community. It will take every one of us doing something. And you know what? We can all do something. How about this? This morning, you say, man, I, I need to be saved. I don't have that heart of Christ. I don't have that love inside me you're talking about today. Tell me more about this Jesus. Tell me more about this relationship. Tell me more how to change my attitude. Tell me more about how to be a follower of Christ. These guys right here, they'll tell you exactly how to do it. Or this, man, I want to be an active I all am, I am church member. I'm not a member of the church, but man, I'd love to be a member so I can commit and be a part of it. These guys will tell you how it is to be a member. Father, God, this is your time of invitation. Move on our hearts. Move in our lives. God, help us to be obedient. In Jesus' name, amen. close to you and never let me go I lay it all down again to hear you say that I'm your friend my desire
God, we love you. Lord, we thank you for first loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed. Hey, real quick, before you leave, there is sandwiches and cake in the well to celebrate Brother Clay's birthday, so go get you some, please. Whoop, whoop.